So by chapter 13 of Mark, Jesus has arrived in Jerusalem as king and he spent a couple of days going backwards and forwards from Bethany to Jerusalem to the temple. He's been teaching in the temple and he's found himself in conflict with uh, the uh, religious authorities. Now in chapter 13, they're on their way back to Bethany and, and him and his disciples are sitting on the slopes of the Mount of Olives overlooking Jerusalem. As Jesus and his disciples sit on the slopes of the Mount of Olives, in front of them is the Kidron Valley and then there's the Temple Mount. They're looking down upon the temple, the, the centre of the Jewish religion, the, the centre of the, the holy city Jerusalem. And his disciples are thoroughly impressed with, them, with what they've seen. As they were leaving that temple just that day, they'd pointed out how magnificent the stones were and how magnificent a building it was. We can imagine looking further across the city, there's the Temple Mount, then there's the Tyroplane Valley, then there's Mount Zion. And sitting on Mount Zion, there's uh, Herod's palace built by Herod the Great. Um, this is where the Roman governor Pontius Pilate would be in residence. He normally lived down on the coast in Caesarea Maritima, but in these special times, festival times, when the crowds in Jerusalem swelled, he would come and take up his residence in Herod's palace. While the disciples are looking at the temple, uh, I sort of imagine Jesus sees the, um, the power of Rome. Because as Jesus talks to them, uh, he, he says, the temple is not going to last. Uh, not, there won't be one stone left on another. And this shocks them. And the disciples ask, when will these things be? Thinking it must, he must be talking about the end of the age, the judgment day. Uh, and then Jesus has an extended uh, speech um, to his disciples. And in that speech, he talks about kingdom will rise against kingdom. And here he's talking about human history. Uh, human history has always been like this, kingdom rising against kingdom. And there, even in their city that they're looking over the top of, they can see this with Pilate symbolising Rome, overrunning Israel, symbol, symbolised by the, by the temple. Um, kingdom rising against kingdom. This is human history. It always has been the case. Jesus is saying as long as human history continues, it will be the case. Now the interesting thing is, uh, as, as they sit on the Mount of Olives, the disciples seem to be looking at the temple, the, the display of how great uh, their God is, and yet the power of Rome seems to obliterate that. Where is God in this whole thing? Now Jesus, in his speech, remembers the prophecy of Daniel. Uh, kingdom rising as kingdom, Daniel pictured this as one beast eating another. And this is human history, beastly power. And in the midst of this beastly power, uh, Daniel looked ahead and saw one like a son of man, the only human figure in the whole discussion. And uh, Daniel saw the one like a son of man coming to God's throne at a time of judgment and uh, receiving all authority in heaven and on earth. And he was given the kingdom of God and the son of man reigned over God's kingdom forever and ever and ever. And this kingdom was not just for the Jew, but it was for everybody, people of every tongue and tribe and language. And so Daniel's vision was, yes, the world is about one beast wiping out another beast over and over again, and yet the, the, the kingdom that will last is the kingdom of God given to the one like a son of man. And uh, as Jesus looks over the city of Jerusalem, in the foreground, the temple of, that's impressed the disciples so much, uh, in the background, uh, the Herod's palace with Pilate, uh, the symbol of Rome, who ends up destroying. Israel, kingdom versus kingdom. But then Jesus also talks about the one like a son of man. And rather than watching, looking at the temple or rather than looking at the, uh, the other things that they can see so readily, in that speech, Jesus urges the disciples to watch for the coming of the son of man because he will bring the kingdom of God. <laughs>